Have you ever looked at a bridge and wondered, why does it look like that? Some sweep gracefully over a river in a perfect curve, while others hang like giant spider webs in the sky. Today, we're diving into two of the most fascinating bridge types in history, arch bridges and suspension bridges. We'll break down their designs, the materials that make them possible. So stick around, because we're about to bridge the difference between arches and suspensions right here on History of Simple Things. Before we get into the details, let's picture these two. An arch bridge looks like it's giving the river a big stone hug. Its main feature is that beautiful curved structure, pushing the weight down and outward. It's sturdy, ancient in design, and feels like it belongs in a Roman history book. On the other hand, a suspension bridge feels airy and dramatic. It's like the bridge is floating, held up by cables that hang from massive towers. Think of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's practically a sculpture you can drive on. The arch bridge works on one simple principle, which is compression. The arch shape takes all the weight from above, cars, people, trains, and pushes it along the curve to the ends, or abutments. These abutments are like the bridge's shoulders, holding everything in place. The stronger and heavier they are, the more the bridge can carry. That's why ancient arch bridges could last for centuries. They're basically self-locking puzzles of stone. The suspension bridge works in almost the opposite way. Instead of compression, it relies on tension. The main cables are stretched tightly between towers and anchored securely at both ends. The bridge deck, the part you walk or drive on, is hung from these cables by vertical suspender ropes. All the load pulls downward, but the cables redirect that force toward the anchors. This design lets the bridge span massive distances without heavy support in the middle. Arch bridges have been around for more than 2,000 years, so the materials have evolved dramatically. The earliest versions were made of cut stone, carefully shaped and placed without any mortar in between. That's right, gravity and geometry alone held them together. Later, brick became common, and in the 19th century, cast iron and steel allowed for lighter yet stronger arches. Today, reinforced concrete is a favorite because it can be molded into the perfect curve and still handle immense loads. Suspension bridges, being a much younger technology, were born in the era of strong metals. Early versions used chains made of wrought iron, but by the mid-1800s, steel cables became the standard. Steel's strength-to-weight ratio is incredible. It can hold huge loads without snapping and still remain flexible enough to handle wind and temperature changes. Modern suspension bridges sometimes use high-performance steel or even advanced composite materials for greater durability. The arch bridge's biggest strength is, well, strength. That curve isn't just pretty, it's one of the most efficient ways to move forces around. Because the entire structure is in compression, there's little risk of parts pulling apart. That's why stone arches can stand for centuries with minimal maintenance. They're also very stable under heavy concentrated loads, perfect for railways or highways. Suspension bridges shine in another way, their span length. They can cross distances far greater than most other bridge types. The Akashi Kaikyo Bridge in Japan, for example, holds the record for the longest central span, almost two kilometers long. And because their decks are relatively lightweight, they use fewer materials for the same length compared to something like a massive truss or arch. They also have a certain flexibility, which allows them to survive earthquakes and strong winds. Of course, no design is perfect. Arch bridges, despite their strength, require solid ground or bedrock for the abutments. If the soil is weak, the outward thrust can cause the bridge to shift or collapse. They also take up a lot of material, 
especially for large spans, and can be expensive to build if they need to cross wide distances. Suspension bridges, while lighter and longer, are sensitive to wind. You've probably heard of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster in 1940. Nicknamed Galloping Gertie, the bridge twisted wildly in a strong wind before breaking apart. Engineers learned from that mistake, adding aerodynamic designs and dampers to keep modern bridges stable. Also, while they can span huge gaps, they require massive, expensive anchors and towers to support the tension in the cables. Today, material choice depends heavily on location, budget, and environmental conditions. For arch bridges, reinforced concrete remains the go-to option because it's versatile, strong, and relatively affordable. Steel arches are used when longer spans or lighter weights are needed, such as in highway flyovers or pedestrian crossings. Advanced materials like fiber-reinforced polymers are rare, but growing in popularity for smaller, specialized projects. Suspension bridges almost always use high-strength steel cables because nothing else offers the same combination of tensile strength, durability, and flexibility. However, corrosion is a major issue. So many modern designs include protective coatings, sealed cable systems, or even stainless steel. Some experimental projects are testing carbon fiber cables, lighter and non-corrosive, but currently far more expensive. Bridges aren't just functional, they're also cultural landmarks. Arch bridges often evoke a sense of permanence and tradition. They can blend into natural landscapes beautifully, their curves mirroring hills and valleys. In historic cities, stone or brick arches can feel like part of the urban fabric. Suspension bridges, on the other hand, are symbols of innovation and progress. Their soaring towers and sweeping cables create an unmistakable silhouette. Many become icons for their cities, the Golden Gate for San Francisco, the Brooklyn Bridge for New York, the Akashi Kaikyo for Kobe. Their open airy structure often becomes a source of local pride and tourism. Whether it's the timeless strength of an arch bridge or the graceful reach of a suspension bridge, both are testaments to human creativity and engineering skill. One uses the power of compression, the other the magic of tension, Yet both serve the same humble purpose, getting us safely from one place to another. So next time you cross a bridge, take a moment to look closer. Think about the forces at work, the materials holding you up, and the centuries of trial and error that made that crossing possible. Because in the end, every bridge is more than just a path. It's a story written in steel, stone, and a little bit of daring. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.